We got Tael Rodriguez from Colombia. Five. And Shane Collins from the United States. Lightweights. Lightweights, that is correct. You know, Shane Collins won his first fight by submission, but he considers himself a striker. So we got the first guy from USA that uh, prefers striking. With cauliflower ears. Yeah. With cauliflower I'll, I'll buy that. <laughs> yeah. I'll buy that. That's what I was. That, that's kind of what I was noticing when I was uh, interviewing him earlier. <laughs> that's a curveball for your point. <laughs> hey, there he goes with a takedown. Good double leg. Nice deep double leg. Good defense by the Columbia fighter. Absolutely. He's got that Great underhook. Pace. You know, what we're seeing again in all these national teams is the cross training. So it's so important that the MMA federations are recognized by their national authorities because that opens the door for the MMA teams to train with the national wrestling teams, with the national boxing teams, with the national judo teams. And hey, that, that's gonna give you a well-rounded fighter. That's gonna give you an MMA fighter out there who's seen the best wrestling, Absolutely. you know, who's seen the best, you know, stand-up. And hey, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that easy, you know, for you know, the American fighter to take this guy down. You know, something you wouldn't expect. Absolutely. Colombia has a great, great, you know, wrestling, wrestling team. Coach. You know, Freddy Serrano, who fought in the UFC, wrestling base. He's still in the wrestling federation. So we're seeing these uh, Latin American countries, you know, greatly improve in a sport that's not traditionally there, which is wrestling, course, which, wrestling. in my very humble opinion, is the best base for MMA. Absolutely. I agree. I 100% agree. Of course, I, I prefer the striking art, and I've always been a striker. But, yeah, I'll be the first to say, if, if res, wrestling, if you have a good wrestling background, you already have a, an advantage in MMA. I mean, and you see all these these dominant uh, uh, MMA fighters right now. Oh, yeah. They're all just basically a phenomenal wrestler with excellent striking. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's, that, that to me, you know, is the perfect fighter out there. Looks like Ch Chain is looking for, it looked like he was looking for a, Kimura, but he switched now. Oh, it looks like he's also trying to set up a Dars. Having a hard time jumping that. That semi half guard one. There he jumped it is. Now. No. Yep. He so he's got that Dars. Oh, he just needs to get his bicep. Yeah. Nope. Good. Columbia protecting well. Yep. He recognized it. Ground upon time. Yeah. That's the first round. First round. So th that was an interesting first round. A lot of wrestling. Uh, A lot of wrestling by Chain, yep. Correct with the U.S. fighter. You know, but he, he's not having, it, it's not a day in the park for him. It's not the, a day in the park for him. Yeah, the, the Colombian is defending well. He's de defended intelligently. I'd like to see him, you know, look for an... Uh, you know, a, a more advantaged position when he is in the ground, not just defending. You know, try to get that uh, that uh, dominant position on the floor as well. So let's see what he has to offer in terms of wrestling and jiu-jitsu. He know? needs to so put the, uh, the American on his back leg. He needs to put him going backwards. If the American is going forward, he's going to push the pace of the striking, and he's going to go for that takedown again. Correct. The Columbia needs to put push forward to have the American going backwards so that uh, neglects that shot. Absolutely. And we're ready for the second. Here we go, second round. Second round of action. Men's lightweight division, gold medal matchup. That's a nice kick. Good cross. Good inside kick. Oh, nice. So you can't be backing up. The Columbia needs to be going forward. Nice. Yep, there it is again.
And again, the Colombian fighter making it difficult on Shen. He's not giving him anything easy. He's looking for that takedown, but he's not making it easy on him. There we go. There it is again. It's the same takedown he took him down in the first round. Good. Passes to half guard. If you were the Colombian coach, what would you be recommending right now? He needs to get to us uh, on his side right there. He already has that right underhook, basically. So right there, that right underhook, he just needs to be scooting up more to his side. And he's close to the cage. I'd advise him to back up to the cage. Get your back on the cage. Then you could use the cage to help you stand up. Use that underhook on the right. Scoop, shrimp, uh, shrimp your butt towards that cage. Get your back on that cage and use it to stand up. Setting up a top guillotine, looks like it. Now he's got a Kimura. It's very hard to finish from sight mount, but it's not impossible. Abandons his mission. Yeah, it seems as if the Colombian fighter is just in survival mode at yep. this point. Up, up, up. I'd like time. to see him exchange in the third round. You know, I, I'd like to see you know, what both these guys have to offer on their feet. Yep. That's that's what the Colombian coaches need to need to advise the Colombian guy. He needs to be going forward uh, to to push pressure to make to make the American fighter on his back leg. The American fighter seems to be very strong when he's going forward. So if, if I was the Colombian coaches, I'd be advising for a little bit of aggression, maybe make the American go backwards a little bit. Try to win on an exchange there. But, hey, you know, the U.S. fighter, he seems to have solid, you know, solid footwork. You, I, oh, yeah. you saw those kicks, oh, yeah. you know, solid hands. So it's, it's, it's been a very dominant two rounds for the U.S. team. Colombia's going to have to come up with something. So, so they either have to go for the finish or... Go for the finish. You know, you, the, you have no it. other option. It's, 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 it's been two solid rounds for, for, the, for Team USA. For USA and yeah. hey, if, if I were Team USA, I'd tell my fighter, just keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah, yep. You know? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what they say. You know? If it ain't broke, yeah. don't fix it. You know, so he's sticking to his game plan. He's doing a great job at it. Let's see if, if Colombia can adjust their game plan and, and try to do something this round to where he, he could. He needs to finish the fight. He needs to finish the he fight. He needs to, yeah. He needs to finish. There's no so, way he's going to win a decision. Out of last this. round, let's see. So he keeps going backwards. So okay. Oh, nice setup for a head kick by Shane. Got a single leg. High crotch, nice. High crotch takedown. very close to the cage. He needs to put his back on the cage and try to sit up using that cage. And it looks like Shane's trying to take him away from the cage. Fingers out. Yep, fingers out of the glove. Second time I see that today. So these EMOP gloves, they're larger gloves. They're, they're meant to protect, you know, the amateur fighter. These are not your usual uh, professional gloves, which is why that happens. So it Correct. just has more foam, and, and, and it's, 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 it's easier for the fingers to slip out. Correct. But, hey, it's in the best interest of, of the fighters to have something this large, you know. Protect maybe the fighters. It, right. Maybe it's a bit uncomfortable. But, hey, you know, uh, they're great gloves. You know, we have Green Hill is, is a fabulous, fabulous company. 
that's you know that's always supported you know IMOF and they produce quality products they're also producing you know the, the best possible gear so these guys are in there and you know they're protected and they feel comfortable with that yes sir now Shane with the top heavy ground and pound he seems to have some really heavy heads yes he does even when you, even when hitting it in that position you know you could just you could hear the power from where we're at you know ringside Seconds left. What well, looks like would be another win for the United States. Very, very dominant performance, you know. By Shane Collins, yep. Correct. Very dominant performance. I look forward to seeing him in the Worlds. You know, dominant, Kids are really good. Yeah, dominant performance. You know, quality fighter. It's looking good. Yep, if I win the decision, uh, without a doubt, Shane Collins won that three rounds to none. Dominated on the feet, dominated on the ground. Good exchanges. Kids good. Absolutely, absolutely. Team USA brought a real strong team. And hey, it's 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 also great to see these guys, you know, perform so well. And we're getting to know them. We're getting to see who these guys are. So we're going to be able to see these kids in the World Championships. Absolutely. You know, it's 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 great to see what they have to offer in the Pan Ams. But it's also uh, an, an opportunity for them to know what they have to work on going into the worlds. Absolutely, man. So now we have the decision. At the red corner, Shane Collins from United States. That's another gold medal for Team USA. That's uh, three? That's three for Team